What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the shop. Howdy, howdy. We have something really, really cool. We've been waiting a long time to actually show this, a couple of months anyway. Yeah. Um, we built something that uh, went on TV, and um, well, when it was all said and done, we got to end up keeping the car. And uh, we're pretty excited to, to show you this thing today. We, uh, for a couple of reasons, to kind of showcase some of the work that we did in a really, really short amount of time, give you a little bit of context of what it's like to build a television car. And then we're gonna go for a ride in it and show you what it sounds like and what it looks like and hopefully kind of what it feels like um, for real. Because I feel like on television, when this car, all the cars that we built, there's like a 10 second clip at the end of each one of the episodes that, yeah. that shows them and a whole lot of dweeby exchange in between. So today <laughs> is the day where we rectify Holden Brothers and show you that the car is cooler than it looks. Yeah. So, for sure. Let's go check this thing out. All right, so it is a TV car in the sense that, well, it works, it runs, it drives, it charges, it stops, it does all that stuff, but it does have a couple little goofy things about the car. And uh, one of the things that didn't get shown on television was the fact that we got the whole thing put together and then we couldn't really get it to run. And it was because the fuel pump relay from the factory, um, from what I read up online, doing some Google search like last second late at night when we were trying to make this thing run, was that the factory Volvo fuel pump relay is common to fail. So we ripped a bunch of stuff out from underneath the dash, found it, pulled it out, and we put a jumper wire in it to make the car run. All right, so here's my fuel pump, and you jump this wire to this wire. That makes fuel pressure. Wait till you hear this thing. Just kidding, it actually sounds like this. So let's see what's actually under the hood. This little thing. The Volvo. So we're not dealing with anything real crazy as far as the long block of the motor. Like this has a bunch of bolt-on accessories. Some came from like Amazon and eBay. I think Steven got the pulley kit. What's that, ICT or JCT? ICT. So this is a common, this is all LS1 set up on the front side. Yep. We're not super LS wizards. I think we're kind of learning as we go that it's, uh, they're pretty straightforward, but there's also a lot to learn about just the basics of what, what works. Um, again, we're predominantly diesel dudes. So this has all been a fun learning experience, um, but nonetheless learning. So we reached out to uh, our friends at Holly <clears throat> and talked to them about what we were doing and uh so they hooked it up and sent us a low ram they sent us their big uh i think it's a hundred and hundred and two hundred two millimeter throttle body yeah it, well, it had a it had a truck intake on it they wouldn't clear the hood and so that was the reason we put the low ram on it we wanted to make sure that we had more than enough clearance and the <clears throat> the guy that we got the uh conversion stuff from said that you could trim a bunch of plastic and it would just barely maybe clear but it was it was we didn't want to do that you know this was this was a much better option because we wanted to do a couple other things in the future with this car and didn't know if it was going to leave and go to tv land or if we were going to end up keeping the thing or, or what the case was so we kind of built it like if if it was going to be our own so we ended up with a holly terminator x uh controlling the entire thing that came from the dude what's that guy s sts or sts machine sts machine i think he's in oregon right yeah we got all the we sourced everything from him 
Um, on the TV show, you'll notice that we got the wrong motor mounts and they kind of dramatized that a whole bunch about, oh my God, it's touching and we'll never figure anything out. We'll never work on a car again because it touched. It really wasn't that dramatic. We called the dude and said, hey, it's got the wrong mounts in it. So he overnighted another set. Well, and his manufacturer, I think, made them wrong. Yeah, that's what it was. It was supposed it to be even, seven and five eighths and they were five and seven eighths or yeah, something. Exactly. So it ended up touching the steering and the cross members. So he overnighted us another set of mounts. We got the thing bolted in and it just clears. I mean, the sway rod under the front, like- It's perfect. It might it might rub the pan a little bit, but it might not it also. It has a holly pan on it too. Oh yeah. There, yeah we, we ended up with quite them. a few different pieces to make this thing work. So it's got uh, the the Holly's cast, cast headers. Manifolds. They're, uh, what are they? They're hooker cast manifolds. Right, okay, so Holly's the parent company of like everything, yeah. right? They bought out all kinds of stuff. So it's got like Excel, um, injectors in it, which I think are like 80 pound an hour. And we went with big because, well, the guys at Holly, we told them what we had and they were like, hey, if you want a turbo or supercharge it or spray nitrous on it, you need to put more injector than you need. And that made perfect sense. So they hooked it up and sent us a, I think they're 80 pound Excels. Right. Um, <clears throat> Holly Low Ram, their big intake, the hooker cast manifolds, um, which have like half inch thick flanges. These things are awesome. Steven used them on his 64 C10. They're, they're good for swaps. They fit the block tight. Yeah, and they, they really look good. Um, we ended up swapping the steering uh, shaft over. That came in the kit from STS. Um, the radiator, we ended up modifying. So we cut a hole in it and put a uh, aluminum 90 on it to get the hoses to line up better. We ended up changing the water pump assembly. Um, kind of just change all the front dress stuff over to, I think all LS1 Camaro. Yeah. Yep. Um, so nothing real wild, a lot of bolt-on stuff, but the car runs really, really good. It's got a 373 gear, it's got like a 28 inch tall tire, and it's got a T56 six speed behind it. Um, the thing is so much fun to drive, it is ridiculous. And the sad part about the whole thing is that throughout the whole build process, we actually went out there to reveal a couple of cars at one time. Steven has never driven or ridden in this car. So I've been going on and on like, dude, I love this Volvo. It's like the coolest thing ever. And he's like, right on. Hey, you know, it's, must you be know, cool. You know, it's more sad than that. Oh man. It's cause even b behind the scenes, I picked this car to build. <clears throat> yeah. And Willie was like, dude, like, what are you doing? I'm like, bro, wagons are cool. Just like, this one's going to be ugly, but like, it's going to be sweet. And then I haven't even got to really drive it. Yeah, I was uh, I was a little reluctant to do it because it showed up. It's like a three hundred thousand mile four cylinder clapped out automatic. It was in stock form. You would never want this ever never. in your life. No, no. You would rather walk uphill than drive this. And now it's literally when you get in the it's car. It's the top of Willie's list of all things. This thing is so much <laughs> fun to drive. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It's made me think of like all kinds. Like what is the dumbest thing I can find and put a drivetrain like this. Like the LS swap the world thing makes more sense when you ride in something like this. Yeah. And um, it just, it makes a lot of sense. People are always like, oh, it's been overdone. It's been overplayed. I think there's a reason, right? Well, it's a, not, not it's if a, you haven't overdone it like us, all we do is well, diesel swap everything. Yeah. So we, it's still fun. But as far as like the reason why it's so popular is because once you get to experience it, even though it's a lot more money than people make it out to be, oh, I bought a hundred dollar LS motor and sprayed a thousand on the bottom end stock. Yeah. And it's still alive. Okay, dude, but for real though, it costs a lot of money to buy a six speed without a core, to buy a new clutch, to make the fuel system, drop the tank, build the exhaust, install this stuff. Even though the Terminator is basically plug and play, integrating all that stuff, which I don't know, is, I don't know, there might be six or eight hours involved in it. Yeah. It's still, there's a decent amount of work, but the, the uh, return on investment is just astronomical. And there's so much support that you could just pick any direction. You could turn that thing into a diesel engine, yeah. almost more affordably than you could buy a diesel motor. Yeah, not really, but it's <laughs> almost that silly because anything you can dream up, somebody's done. So um, yeah, it, it was pretty straightforward. We didn't do a whole lot. This is like the stock booster. We did cut some of the other crap out. Like it doesn't have the windshield washer reservoir and it may not have the overflow tank or whatever, but for the most part, we made that work. We did get a clutch pedal assembly out of a manual car. That took a decent little bit of work just because under the dash is really, really tight and they have all the brackets, like literally an engineer put it together because yeah, everything sweet. overlaps. So that, um, that'll kick your butt a little bit and bleeding the hydraulics was a kind of a pain in the butt. We ended up cutting a hole in the tunnel and we made an patching hole. it and we used, uh, um, 
uh, what is that, a mighty vac? Yep. And actually drew, drew fluid through it. It took like two hours of wasted time and then two minutes of vacuum time and we had a clutch. Yeah. So anyway, there's no room for exhaust. So that exhaust was built last second by Logan. He did it, I think, at a, about an hour. Yeah. Um, he took it up to a shop in Harper, a place that he used to work at, and just put a couple of bins together. We threw an H pipe underneath there. Uh, it's got a couple of, I think they're two chamber Flowmaster 40s. Right? Delta is flows. It, or does it have the like Super that? 10s on it? I th maybe it's got Super 40s. They're longer cases, aren't they? No, that's the Super 10s or okay. whatever. So it sounds a little bit like a Z71. Yeah. Right? Um, but when you're in the car, it's got and you're the heart of a Z71, man. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. It's got a truck motor in it, and it sounds a lot like it. But when you crank it up there around five or 6,000 RPM, you, you kind of lose that weird pulsy effect of, of having side exit exhaust. It makes kind of a weird little burble, but. When you start zinging RPM, God, it just sounds absolutely perfect. And the ratios are so perfect, the car is just amazing to drive. So um, anyway, that's what's going on under the hood. Uh, another thing, the lower control arms in the back, those are completely gone. Yeah, uh, the, bushings. the bushings. The yeah. bushings are completely shot. So however much play you can get, inch and a half, the pinion angle is adjustable from, I don't know, negative two to positive 10. Yeah. And when you shift gears, it's really apparent because it sounds like the pinion slaps the floorboard. It's really just all the slack coming out of the lower control arm. It's kind of hilarious. Um, it adds to the fun when you're driving it. You go around a corner and it dances around a little bit, but you just- A little rear wheel steer. Yeah, you just give it the bastard a little bit and grab another gear and just keep on, keep on laughing. I think that's the, the, the coolest thing about the car is how much fun it is to be in and to drive. And when people see you, they're like, what? Then you drop a gear, and, you know? Let the bald eagles out. Yeah, dude, let, it, <laughs> let it rip and it's a lot of fun. So. We're gonna check over the basics on this thing. It's had a lifter that's like collapsed and come back to life three or four times. So we're gonna make sure it's got motor oil in it. I think we got five gallons of gas. All right, enough talking about this thing. Let's go rip this thing's guts out. We're going to Mexico. It's right down the road actually, so. This car is heavier than it looks. Yeah, so it's broke. I'm winded. Dude, we thought this looks like a flat road, but it's literally like it's the so most not. uphill, flat hill thing I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, we didn't even get to hardly even play a little bit. That must have been a lot of what the vibration was, was Stuff. a bent axle shaft already. Yeah. It definitely broke an axle shaft, that's what I think, because. It's got a semi-floating rear axle and it broke and I think the bearing's side-loading and you hear the rotor rubbing the backing plate. So when you let out on the clutch, there's lots of grinding, I know that. Yeah. So we're gonna get it back to the shop. We got a buddy who's rolling up here to give us a ride back. We'll come back and recover the car here in a little bit. And uh, we'll get it back to the shop, get the axle torn apart, see what's up. Maybe we get somebody like, I don't know if Yukon makes chromoly shafts for a little rear end or if we need to just go ahead and swap an 8.8 or a 9-inch into the back of it and just be done. Yeah. But we needed a posse or anyway. Yeah, now we really need a posse. Hey man, how's it going? This is kind of lame. I really wanted to go and have a really good time. This happens every time we start to have fun. 
It's like, yeah, it's gonna be great. Pow! Right in the kisser. I guess on the way back, I'm gonna contemplate what kind of rear axle we're gonna put in this thing. What do you think? An 8.8? Eight eight? A 9 inch? A narrowed 60? Maybe somebody will hook us up. Well, here I am dragging Willie, because what does he do? He breaks the fun before we can even have fun. 